a well-known speaker in the meantime at uh, our conferences uh, about uh, various subjects. And today we'll talk about the new subjects. No! Today we'll talk about the new topic, uh, uh, Ansible uh, Tower or Ansible AWX uh, open source version. Good morning. Um, it's not called Tower. It's called AWX. Um, I have explicitly called, actually, I don't even know how to pronounce it, whether it's AWX or AUX. I haven't asked yet. Um, AUX, like the AUX uh, program, the Unix program AUX, which stands for, what does the AWK stand for? AHO, Weinberger, and Koenigan. Very good. Old, old farts here in the room. Good. Um, so, good morning. I'm Jan Piet Mens. I would like to tell you a little bit about AWX, which is a brand new project, um, or relatively new actually, um, uh, uh, in the Ansible front. It is a web based user interface with a REST API and all sorts of very, very interesting things built on top of it. Now, the AWX project has been uh, open sourced recently by uh, Red Hat, and AWX doesn't really mean much. Michael DeHaan, who originally started Ansible Works as an organization, as a company, says uh, AWX basically means Ansible Works, but it doesn't really mean anything. And why has Red Hat uh, opened, uh, open sourced AWX? Well, because, as Red Hat says, that's what we do. They, uh, they open source most or maybe all of their projects. So um, what is AWX or what, 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 what does it come from? Many of you, uh, sorry, let me start off with a question. Who knows something about Ansible? Who's heard about Ansible? Very good. Who uses Ansible? Very good. Who uses SaltStack? Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had, to, I had to dig back because there was a dig before about SSH. Uh, it doesn't matter. Salt is is uh, is lovely. What is uh, you know, what is fantastic about salt is the, the blinding speed compared to Ansible. There's no question about that. But other than that, uh, I would prefer Ansible. So uh, you know about Ansible and Ansible AWX um, uh, increases or augments uh, Ansible's capabilities. What we have had so far is, if we look at this. Um, we have here Ansible. Ansible calls out to its nodes, agentless nodes via SSH, which is an agent, as we heard. But yeah, okay. Um, and uses playbooks and uh, inventory files, which are normally located on the host, on the managed from, uh, host, on the, on the machine, on the laptop, from which you invoke Ansible. Um, Ansible AWX is basically sort of a little bit more, a little bit, yeah. Uh, 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 a web UI, a task, uh, a task manager, which runs on a machine or on a group of machines. We'll talk about that in a little while. And um, <coughs> does what we know of it. So it will invoke our playbooks. It will use inventories. And it will manage nodes. So we're not changing anything. We're just augmenting it a little bit. And of course, communication. Um, remains pluggable, where what we are basically using under AWX remains here Ansible, currently in version 2.4. So we use Ansible's um, pluggable communication uh, modules. Uh, most of all, or most important to us, of course, is the SSH module. So the features that we have in AWX, first of all, and most important for very many people uh, is the dashboard. Um, Again, a question, who of you has already once seen Tower, Ansible Tower? OK, Ansible Tower is and remains a commercial product. Ansible Tower uh, you can still obtain uh, through Red Hat. What we are talking about is Ansible AWX. And Ansible AWX is the, the open source project which every so and so many months, we don't exactly know. I, I certainly don't know how many months, probably sort of around three months, maybe four or five months, will then turn into Ansible Tower. So with it's Ansible Tower, I beg your pardon. Is it CentOS version Rel? Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, one could perhaps see it that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fedora versus Rel. Fedora versus Rel. 
Um, interesting, interesting point of view, yeah. So what we have is a dashboard. That's what very, very many people are interested in, and um, it, it looks quite nice. <coughs> we'll show you uh, some screenshots in a moment. We have so-called real-time playbook execution. We have real-time playbook output. Um, that is particularly interesting. I, here again, I'll show you screenshots about all this. Uh, Push-button deployment is uh, something that many customers want. They want to be able to have a department or have a group of people who create playbooks and uh, maybe a first level support who, in case of, case of a problem, literally pushes one button and that one button then invokes a playbook. Yeah? Um, we have, of course, everything that Ansible can otherwise do, things like Galaxy integration, roles, etc. The whole uh, language, uh, all the language <laughs> concepts of Ansible, Ansible playbooks remain. We're not changing that. Remember the picture underneath all this uh, remains Ansible. No, I can't. No. So, a uh, screenshot of the, um, of the central dashboard. Pay a little bit of attention to the logo here at the top left. I will talk about the logo in, uh, at the end. Um, that is the, uh, the so-called original artwork. Then we have on the left, we have a menu with dashboard and jobs and so on, uh, schedules, um, credentials. We'll talk about all these things individually. We have in the, ce in the center, a, uh, all this, by the way, powered by WebSocket. So if things happen in the background, you will, the, the dashboard uh, changes. We have here in green the number of successful job runs. A job run or a job template run is what you and I so far would have called a playbook run. Okay? Um, the red, of course, mean unsuccessful. We have recently used jobs here on the bottom left. A little green dot means that it was successful, a little red dot means, or a red dot with an exclamation mark, that means that it was unsuccessful. You have a little rocket, a uh, little image picture of a rocket here, um, and a pencil. The pencil is always added, and the rocket is, is the push button. that you, you press that again to launch a job, a playbook, with exactly the same parameters that you launched it with last time. Um, and on the top, number of hosts, number of failed hosts, inventories, uh, synchronization, inventory sync failures, uh, discuss that in a second, number of projects, and at, again at the top, even further up, you have settings and administrative settings, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So your typical, your typical playbook. One very important thing to say about Ansible AWX, it has a REST API, and everything that you will see now, everything that you see in Ansible AWX in the user interface, totally, absolutely everything, is in the API. So contrary to what some people do, is they have a, some sort of nice GUI and then they plug in an API at the bottom, Ansible AWX started out the other way around. It started out with an API and the UI, the user interface, was then uh, put on top. Which means that everything that we see, everything that we can do, any button that we can push, we can also push programmatically. So if you were here a couple of years ago and heard me speak about MQTT, you could have some physical button published in MQTT, which is picked up, gets a WebSocket, uh, gets, a, gets an interaction, and then, for example, invokes the REST API to actually launch the, the process. Just crazy things that are possible and feasible. Authentication in AWX is... Uh, I can't think of anything that is missing. We have so-called local data, so local users. We have the social things. We can, you can authenticate via GitHub, via Google, a couple others. You have the enterprise uh, settings, SAML, Active Directory, obviously, Radius, TACAX, uh, which is a bit unlikely, but it, it actually, they actually work. Um, uh, Kerberos, of course, and uh, anything that has to do with LDAP, so Open LDAP, et cetera. So this is authentication to or uh, authentication at um, AWX. Um, a lot of uh, know-how, a lot of uh, uh, work has gone into security. Playbooks are executed in their, also in their own so-called yeah, sandbox. Um, it's at the moment a little bit unclear what that exactly means, um, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, they are run by a particular user in a closed box, a box that we cannot really access uh, we'll see in a moment why not. Um, the playbooks are run in their own uh, change routes, and um, we, what we have with Ansible AWX is role-based access control. So, for example, 
we as an administrator, I as an administrator, would set up a job template to run with a particular inventory, with particular rights, and I could then, for example, um, give Jos the, an execute right on the playbook. Okay? And that means that Jos, at that instant, or automatically has all other rights he requires to actually launch that playbook. So, can access the inventory, can access the logs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Can't see the playbook, can't see the inventory, but he can, he can use what I gave him. Here we have an example of this, uh, where at the bottom we are giving, we're, uh, we've got a user, Jane, Jane J, and uh, she may, you, may execute a particular playbook. And this execute means that this user automatically through our back, through the role-based access control, automatically inherits any, um, uh, any uh, necessary permission to actually execute this playbook locally in AWX. Inventories, um, you know if you've uh, done, or if you know a little bit of about Ansible, you know that Ansible has an inventory, which is typically called hosts, slash etc, slash um, ansible, slash hosts. Uh, ansible inventories can be um, scripts, so you have uh, scripts for oh, all, the, all the cloud services, and you can create your own uh, inventory scripts. Ansible 2.4 brings in inventory modules, so the whole scripting uh, thing has been changed, has been uh, more or less revolutionized into modules, which are much, much faster. Anyway, you know that Ansible has a, a whole bunch of different kinds of inventories. The same thing goes for AWX. We have a whole a different set of inventories. We have inventory files. We can create local inventories, so add, host. Um, we can sync inventories with um, Amazon Web Services, with Google Compute Engine, with Rackspace. We can also use our custom uh, Ansible inventory scripts that we've been using so far on the command line. We can import them into um, AWX and, and use them. What we can also do is, uh, and here, that is very, very important, uh, software configuration management, SCM, um, where we have a Git repository, for example, Git Mercurial Subversion, I think that's it. Um, we can uh, import inventory via um, an SCM, and we have so-called smart inventory. Smart inventory is basically like, a, like an inventory based on existing hosts and, and uh, existing facts. So here we have uh, two uh, top and bottom, two screenshots. Here we have a, a host file sourced from a source via a project, via a <coughs> Git repository. And here we have an inventory with hosts, and we he see here alice.example.net and bomb.example.net in uh, a bunch of groups. That, that's what this, uh, this looks like. Projects. Uh, projects contain uh, configuration, and projects contain job templates, job templates or work templates. And um, this is basically a collection of playbooks which could originally careful tower allowed them to be on a file system. This is still permitted, but I've stricken it through on purpose because this is something that is already now has been deprecated in Ansible AWX for the simple reason that due to the fact that we can cluster or we will be able to cluster AWX machines, we don't exactly know where the local file system is. So we can have, we log into one of our AWX task uh, servers, we put a playbook there, but that task, that playbook might actually be run by a completely different machine, which no longer has access to that to that playbook. So this is, has been deprecated already now. Generally speaking, via a repository, um, playbooks are synchronized with the AWX uh, infrastructure. So on the one hand, you have an administrator or a developer who creates a playbook, checks it into a repository. And on the other hand, you have Ansible AWX, which checks out that repository and ha then has access to the playbook. Um, this need not be done manually, it can also be done automatically at every launch of a playbook that checkout should, for example, happen. Uh, we have job templates, which are basically playbook runs, and we have so-called workflows, which allow us to combine playbooks, uh, playbook runs together. When a job actually runs, um, so when a job is launched and it actually runs, this is a little bit of a screenshot what we would typically see on the left. 
we see some parameters, uh, general parameters of the playbook, so details here, whether it was successful, when it was started, when it ended, uh, launched by, for example, launched by the API or launched by Tower, uh, sorry, Tower Client, launched manually by an administrator, which inventory it used, which project it used, which project revision it used. Here we see already a, a Git, uh, this was a Git repository, Git SHA, um, which playbook uh, was, was chosen, which machine credentials, etc. And here on the right hand side, you have, first of all, uh, here on the top, a bar, a color bar, which the typical Ansible colors, green, red, and uh, orange or yellow, to indicate uh, success, failure, or changes. Um, this bar progresses. You see how many plays were involved, tasks, hosts, number of uh, amount of time that it was elapsed. You can download this output. You can collapse the output. So this is quite this is quite effective, in particular for longer play runs, and what we see here is the normal playbook output that you would see on the console with one slight <coughs> difference, and that's quite an elegant touch, and that is these lines here, the OK lines or the change lines or the fail lines, you can click on them. And then up comes a dialog box which shows you what that task did, which variables existed at that moment. You see a whole JSON data structure of what Ansible has, then, has, has done. So this thing is not just a static picture, it's really live. Um, no, I don't have an example. Um, so you would see which, uh, wh what changed, why was it changed, and, and, and the reasons, for example, for a failure. Then there's a job list. This job list uh, shows you the last, uh, the last jobs that ran, whether they, ran, they were successful, uh, what type of um, uh, job it was. So for example, I. Uh, I kicked off here a playbook run, so a job name called T-Job. These things here start pulsing. Can't show you now, but they start pulsing green, so they, they're showing, you that, showing us that it's running. So this is the playbook run, and this, the fact that I started, that I launched the playbook run, automatically launched a, an SCM update, because I, in the project I said, whenever this playbook is run, it should please check well, there's a new version in the Git repository. So that uh, launches a, an SCM update, which optionally would update, and that also launches an inventory sync to determine whether um, a, uh, an inventory in a uh, repository has, uh, has, been, has been changed and needs synchronization. Workflow jobs allow us in AWX to chain different um, uh, templates together, uh, so basically chain playbooks together. Uh, here's a chain of two. We have start. This one was successful. This one was not successful. We see that on the top All also. We can also branch out. We can say, if this playbook run is successful, then please do that, else do that. So if it was not successful, then go the other way. Yeah? This can... Uh, this can uh, uh, this, there's no end uh, to uh, how many jobs you can, you can chain together may or may not be interesting depending on your, um, on your workflows. Um, we have logging um, in AWX. AWX can log to uh, here, uh, an example with Logstash output. Those of you who've uh, ever seen Logstash uh, recognize that probably. And here's also an example with uh, Logstash. So we have logging it can be configured to um, be sent to aggregator services such as Splunk, uh, Logly, Sumo Logic, whatever that is, or uh, our own, so Elastic, Elk. Um, what else do we have in AWX? We have notifiers, of course. Notifiers, just like the notification uh, modules that we have in Ansible. Um, there are a number of built-in, and when I say built-in, that means that there is also a user interface with which we can configure these notifiers. And important is also that these notifiers um, get carried along. So for example, if we have a notification configured for an inventory sync, then this notification would also be used for any playbook that uses that inventory. Yeah, that's very, very important, the uh, hierarchy in notifications. So we have email, uh, Slack here on the right-hand side is an example with email, with, and you, we see the job output, Slack, Twilio, IRC, PagerDuty, 
HipChat and uh, general webhooks. Um, a very important thing in AWX is uh, the whole topic of credentials. When we are running playbooks, or when we're, we're going to run a playbook, we're going to run this playbook, AWX is going to run this playbook against a set of machines, a set of infrastructure that we have. So how is that playbook going to, uh, co going to uh, connect to these machines? If we did it on the command line, we would know, OK, we can specify with whatever it is, minus K, I've never used it, uh, user and password to, uh, to log in. I hope nobody of you has to do that. Or we have an uh, SSH agent running, um, which would uh, automatically provide a key for us. But we're running this from AWX, so we don't have that. And this is where credentials come into place. And um, credentials, we can set up, and there's user interface for that, for AWS, for Google. We have so-called machine credentials. Here's a, in a moment, there's a screenshot of that. Um, credentials for SCM, so for example, for our Git or subversion repositories. We have Vault, Ansible Vault, you know Ansible Vault? Vault credentials, VMware, and also custom credentials. Now, custom credentials, for example, for accessing networking equipment that we might have. And this here is an example of custom credential where I've created a, uh, a credential type called pasta, and it has three fields, user ID, password, and which type of pasta would you like. Now, this, um, this I see when I create, when I actually configure the credential and say, I need this credential to access that and that equipment. Then I'm asked, and this is here, for example, um, multiple choice, and here I can choose one of spaghetti fettuccine or whatever it is, girandole, and I type these in, and these credentials are then later on made available via either environment variables in my playbook, if I so desire, I configure that specifically, or I can have them, uh, I can have Ansible AWX store them in a file, and I then use the file in a playbook, in my templates, in my, uh, yeah, wherever, as variables, etc. So any amount of custom credentials and machine credentials. Here is an example of a machine credential with a pasted SSH key. We paste in the key. We uh, add the uh, passphrase for the, pri for the uh, private key. Or we say prompt on launch. For almost all uh, objects, there is a prompt on launch, which will allow Ansible to, or which says Ansible AWX should ask me when we actually launch the, uh, the playbook. Um, webhooks can be used both incoming and outgoing. This here is an example of an outgoing webhook where on the left-hand side we configure a, um, a webhook, so which URL, which header should be posted. And then on the right-hand side we see a, uh, the webhook post. So we can, via Ansible, for example, after a playbook has run, after an inventory sync, at any, at any moment actually in AWX, we can invoke a webhook to trigger something. Um, so that is AWX, basically, in its capabilities. And one thing that is coming, respectively, Tower has had that for a while. In AWX, it's not quite ready, um, but they're working on it. The reason is the, the architecture has changed a bit, um, and that is going to be clustering. Um, the clustering is, uh, uh, in all uh, situations here, when we talk in, in AWX language, when we talk about clustering, we mean um, redundancy and load sharing. So with cluster, uh, here I've only drawn two, but there will be at the very least three hosts with clustering. What we have is the, the whole RabbitMQ um, uh, uh, situation, which is used automatically in AWX. We can't configure AWX without RabbitMQ and without Celery. These, these components are what, what actually make the cluster. And then we have either a load balancer, or even without a load balancer, we can then contact um, any, any client, can choose any of the HTTP endpoints that AWX provides, and will find everything. So we have different AWX hosts, left and right, here too, and they share clustering, a worker cluster here with RabbitMQ and Celery. Celery is the actual, uh, let's say, task uh, launcher that we have. And the whole thing is backed by a non-clustered um, PostgreSQL uh, database. This PostgreSQL database is very important. Let me just go back shortly. Everything 
that we see, everything that we configure, any job <coughs> output, any task output, everything that we see uh, whenever we run a job, be it here on the left, different versions, inventory, uh, facts, for example, that are gathered automatically from Ansible nodes, um, any, um, any response to a task, etc., is all stored in uh, Postgres. In other words, we have, a, um, we have an audit uh, trail which can be seen un until that audit trail is uh, cleared out. That is something that customers have always wanted also. Yeah, the REST API, um, here are two examples. On the first uh, part, on the, on the top half of the slide, I launch a job with uh, some uh, extra bars. And at the bottom of the slide, in the second example, um, I launch a job, uh, sorry, not I launch a job, I create a, a user. Yeah? We can list users, create users, create credentials, create, uh, create playbooks, create jobs, create workflows, anything that we see in the, um, a, uh, sorry, in the user interface we have an API for. We can access the logs, we can, we can do everything. So Tower CLI or Tower CLI is a little, yeah. You don't know Joe? Would you please leave the room? <laughs> Joe is a little utility I wrote which uh, literally overnight uh, I think got thousand stars or something. Uh, and it's shown up in Debian, it's in Homebrew, all sorts of people have uh, taken it. Joe is uh, a little utility I created because I suddenly realized, I was actually working with Ansible at a customer site and I suddenly realized uh, creating, um, what am I looking for? Creating JSON in the shell script is a pain, okay? It's a total pain. And this was trivial. This was, I think, an hour work. And uh, it then evolved a little bit, and people have picked it up and have added to it. Joe uh, creates <laughs> JSON in the command line. So by default, thank you for asking. This is, of course, dollar uh, parenthesis open. That's uh, the, uh, the result of a shell execution. And so we have Joe, username equals JOG1. First name is Joanne. Last name is Guess. This will create a single object with those elements properly escaped and properly typed and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's Joe. You must look at it. It's a sweet little utility. And it's, if you compare that to what we have up here, and if you think what happens if you have to escape double quotes and things like that, it turns in really, 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 really messy. And in most cases, no, all cases so far, Joe does the right thing uh, immediately. Answered your question? Good. GitHub JP Men's Joe. Um, Towerkly is a little, um, is a little uh, Python or relatively small, small Python uh, program, also provided by the, I think, I think it's an Ansible project, not quite sure. Uh, it is an Ansible project, it says so at the bottom. Um, Towerkly is basically is a little command line tool with which we can control tower. So basically, um, fire off uh, API requests. So towerkly, I configure with it. Uh, I configure my the URL, the um, the user, whether secure, whether insecure, etc. And then from that moment on, I don't have to muck about with curl parameters. I just use towerkly. Um, the nice thing about Tarakli is Tarakli knows about Ansible, knows about Ansible playbook. So, for example, what happens here, Tarakli job launch, the job template is called tjob1, and then suddenly Tarakli brings up an editor and says, we need, you need to fill in, please, uh, extra variables. So in the job template, we configured, in AWX, we configured a job template and said, we need two extra variables and prompt on launch, and Towerkly will automatically uh, pull that in. See, oh, prompt on launch. Okay, so it prompts us here now, and then in our dollar editor, 
we add the values, save that, and off it goes. Yeah? So it's a little bit more intelligent than just firing off an API request. Provisioning callbacks is something that for many, many people uh, will, uh, will be highly interesting. We, uh, you know, if you've been using Ansible, you know that Ansible generally is push-based. So from a management system, from your laptop, from wherever, from your management system, you, we push out. So we connect via SSH to our nodes, and we push out information. And you probably also know that Ansible can be run as a pull-based system. Uh, the very, very strong disadvantage uh, of doing that would be that we have to install Ansible on the nodes, which we normally don't want to do. Provisioning callbacks together with Ansible AWX, since Ansible AWX always runs, it's a service which always runs, provisioning callbacks allow us to mix both things together. So with provisioning callback, we can give, we can create a, a URL, which looks like this. It has a host config key, which you define, you decide. And we can give that to a host. And as long as that host um, exists in our inventory, that host will at any moment be able to invoke that URL to be provisioned in push mode from AWX. So it's basically, it's a please start provisioning me. Okay? And that can, of course, be invoked via curl, um, out of cron, via, out of first boot, kickstart, whatever you want, cloud, uh, cloud uh, provision, etc. So that's, uh, that's also very interesting. Yeah, hooks and repositories, um, very important uh, since we'll be running playbooks or we'll, since we'll be storing playbooks in repositories, we will want to be able to sort of kick Tower into motion. We can do that with webhooks, which are available with most, uh, most systems. And the, the theory is, of course, that we check in uh, our playbook into our SCM. That SCM fires off a webhook. Uh, we pick that up, send it to the API, and a tower then goes, pulls in the playbook, and launches the, the actual playbook. So uh, installing AWX today is um, what's the political correct word? A pain in the ass. Um, Ansible AWX currently is supported exclusively on these systems. So Docker, simple Docker, uh, OpenShift, or Minishift, and nothing else. So for example, if you follow the, uh, or if you are in the uh, Ansible-AWX uh, IRC channel, every few minutes you'll see somebody show up and say, is there a way to install? No. Um, these are the supported mechanisms, and that is probably there to stay. So um, OpenShift, MiniShift, and plain Docker. And of course, I, I write there PostgreSQL because that is a, a prerequisite. There is an Ansible playbook which will install, uh, which works uh, very, very nicely, an Ansible playbook with an inventory which you have to configure. And that will install um, AWX on a, in a Docker infrastructure for you with existing um, existing images, uh, if you want them. You can also uh, have that playbook, build them, uh, build them yourself. Um, or with OpenShift and MiniShift. Those are the currently supported configurations. And it is probably going to be that AWX um, clustering will work initially on OpenShift only. Yeah, Probably. We're not quite sure how that's going to happen, how that's going to be. Um, yeah, this is a slide, uh, or a slide, uh, rather, about the actual individual parts which you find within these uh, containers, uh, Docker containers. We have a, um, a web, a so-called web container, which contains an Nginx uh, server, uh, UWSGI, Django, and then we have our PostgreSQL in a container, for example. We have RabbitMQ in a container. Uh, the things like memcached, D, etc., which also run and also are requirements for AWX. That is, I assume, also one of the main reasons why the Ansible team wants clear, clear-cut installation paths on particular infrastructure because there's just thank you so many different possibilities, so many different components that have to work together that it will probably be a total support nightmare. And on the other hand, we have um, the actual 
uh, so-called AWS, AWS task machine, which um, has a, a task manager, something written by the Ansible team, <coughs> excuse me, um, which runs Python Celery, which actually does the, 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 actual, the actual jobs. And uh, in here, we have callback receivers and fact cache receivers, which are plugins which are given to Ansible Playbook at the moment of execution to actually get back the output, get back the facts, transport them back to, via RabbitMQ into the Postgres um, QL database, and the task manager would then push them up via WebSockets <coughs> all the way back up, to the, back up the pipe into the user interface. Okay? So it's highly complex, but I must say it works very well. Um, it really works very well. The only thing that I maybe at the moment wouldn't, don't like so much about um, AWX, but that might be due to the fact that it's, it's not, not, I'm not running on a release, um, and that is that it, it gives the impression, the web UI gives, occasionally gives the impression of being a little bit sluggish. Um, in particular, when the job exec executes, you think, oh, well, it's coming sort of one after the other which it is, but that's probably due to this whole WebSocket uh, thing and the fact that it's all clickable. And, um, so there's quite a lot of, quite a lot of infrastructure that's gone in there. So AWX, basically a very, very, very nice thing. And I promised in the course, in the, sorry, in the talk description to talk about the angry potato. And this is the angry potato. This, um, this image makes me very aggressive. That is the um, artwork that you get for Ansible AWX if during the installation you don't say, yeah, I agree to the fact that I please use the original artwork, which is that flying blue thing that I pointed out earlier. If you don't do that, then you get the angry potato. And you can avoid the angry potato and you can avoid the um, saying, yeah, I agree to the artwork if you download these logos created by this GitHub user which uh, th those logos are nothing. They're, they're just plain. They're, they're not plain. They're transparent. It's a transparent bit of nothing. So uh, wherever Ansible, would, uh, AWX would show a logo, you see nothing. But everything is better than seeing the angry potato. Good. So that's basically it. Um, yeah, I wish you safer automation, safer in uh, respect to not the fact that Ansible uh, is unsafe on the contrary, but safer uh, with respect to the fact that Ansible AWX through the user interface, through the role-based access control, through the permission system, um, and of course together with the authentication and authorization system, uh, literally allow us to uh, create systems where we have a first level support, a janitor in the evening who really presses a button and launches a playbook in controlled manner. We have log output, which is kept. We can uh, audit that um, notification system. So it's really a package, a package of things that, um, that are very nice. If you've seen, if you've already had experience with Tower, then you will recognize all these things. Uh, they, the, the look is slightly different, but it's all there. And um, other than that, um, it's, I, would like to very strongly recommend that you have a look at Ansible AWX. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes? Can you compare uh, uh, Tower with uh, Spinnaker? Netflix Spinnaker, is there, is there a resemblance? Are there, uh... No, I cannot compare it. Sorry, I don't know. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, you have to speak louder. Can you elaborate a little bit more about the project and templating that kind of uses the normal Yes, I gladly try. Um, when today using Ansible, Ansible Playbook, you probably, or we, what we typically do is we have a directory. In that directory, we have a playbook, we have roles. Uh, we have perhaps an Ansible config file, uh, sp especially for this, for this playbook. Um, 
And we change into that directory, run Ansible playbook, maybe with minus I dash I on our inventory, but we, ran, uh, we run our playbook and, and off it goes. It, it does something. Um, I trust that that's the way that you at least similarly use it. Okay. Um, the, that is quite different in AWX and, and uh, via extension also in Tower in that respect. Both are, of course, identical. It's, at some stage of the game, it's identical software. What we, what we run in, what we want to run in AWX is a, what is called a job template. You and I would call a job template a playbook. But it's not just a playbook. A job template has an associated inventory with it. So for example, in one AWX system, I log into my AWX system, uh, I see maybe four different inventories. One that comes out of a static file, one that is statically configured, one that comes out of a, a, a git pull on a host file which I pick up from somewhere, and one which is a, um, an inventory script. And when I run a playbook, I want to be able to specify which inventory should, that should, should be used for that playbook. And this coupling is done in a so-called job template. And that job template brings these two things together, but not just those two things. What it also brings together, and it has to bring together, is, for example, which machine credential should we use? Which, in other words, which SSH key to log in? Which vault credential do we need? Which custom credential? These bits and pieces together go into a job template. Okay, so a job template is a is uh, yeah, a, a, a big word for what we would say is a directory and, Ansible, uh, play, and, uh, and an Ansible playbook. And a project describes how, um, for example, where the uh, playbooks come from, where the inventories come from, whether they come out of a version control system, and if so, which version control system. <laughs> And whom does this project belong to? Which team, which organization, et cetera? That is um, contained in a project. So you have project, encompasses inventories and uh, job templates, and the job template accesses a particular inventory to actually run a playbook that comes out of the project. If you understood that, then you have my highest admiration. I hope it helped a little bit. Yeah? What's that? Yeah, correct. Uh, the uh, automatic scheduling is basically a, uh, a glorified cron. It's nothing else. Yeah. So you have on the left-hand side, on the in the menu, you have a, a, a scheduling, and you can say for for a template, for a job template, or for a workflow template. Workflow template encompasses other job templates. Um, you can say, okay, please run this every Tuesday morning uh, between 7 and 19, or run it starting now every hour until maximum 31st of December at 12.45. Yeah? So it's a, it's a glorified cron, and um, it will run not only so-called management jobs, for example, for clearing out old log entries and things like that, but it runs any, any playbook or every, any inventory sync, for example, inventory synchronization, um, inventory synchronization is not just the fact that we have to copy a file over, but also the fact, for example, that we have um, an inventory plugin script which does something, and whatever it does, that is synchronized, that is brought into uh, Ansible Tower, uh, sorry, Ansible AWX. Yeah. It, it's a bit daunting. The first few minutes, it's a bit daunting uh, until you get the hang of these words, and then, then it becomes very, very easy. I don't know. No, if yeah, I want to take last question, or otherwise it's lunchtime as well. Thank lunchtime? You. Yeah. Well, that's a priority. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, again, oh, that's the lovely. Same uh, appreciation. Perfect. Thank you.